Hi, I'm actor Ian Champion, and welcome to History of Horror Cinema, my podcast series devoted to the good, bad, and the ugly of horror movie history. Please don't forget to like what you hear and hit subscribe. I have such sights to show you. Spook Louder, 1943 for the Three Stooges' 69th Columbia short in 1943, director Del Lord chose to remake a comedy he'd shot for Max Sennett in 1932 called The Great Pie Mystery. The significance of the title will soon become clear, or rather unclear, as Spook Louder is a bizarre and slapdash slapstick effort that has one surreal gag that works and one that makes no logical sense at all amidst the mayhem. A reporter, Stanley Brown, looking for a story, interviews crackpot special investigator Professor J. Ogden Dunkfeather, Lou Kelly, who we can tell is a dingbat on entry as he studies a skull with a magnifying glass and concludes dandruff-related suicide from it. In flashback, he relates the story of Ted Lorch's barking mad wealthy spy Mr. Graves, and how he relates to our trio. The Stooges' classic lineup still of Larry, Moe, and Curly begin as door-to-door -door salesmen hawking a reducing machine gizmo consisting of a skull cap rigged up via wires to a complicated box of valves, which jiggles the wearer furiously enough to shake off excess pounds or make cocktails, as Curly helpfully suggests. They are admitted to Graves' mansion by his butler, Charles Middleton, best known as the suavely menacing Ming the Merciless in the Flash Gordon serials, and later, as we shall see in the Bowery Boys' own horror comedy Spook Busters in 1946. Graves mistakes the Stooges for his new caretakers, who are happy to go along with the chance to make some actual money, despite the evident fact that he is insane, with anti-Japanese spy paranoia. It turns out his madness is partly fueled by his dastardly invention of a death ray, of which he proudly boasts, it will destroy millions. While he heads to a secret Washington meeting, he instructs the Stooges to defend his eerie home from Jap spies, equipping them with a cartoon cannonball bomb plus wick for defense. As Graves leaves, an American spy threesome led by Stooges regular Stanley Blystone lie in wait, dressed as a skeleton, a devil, and for some reason a priest, respectively. Larry, Moe, and Curly then spend the next ten minutes negotiating such spooky elements as a cat tinkling the piano's ivories, and a hairy, taloned hand abducting Moe and then trapping his head in a revolving bookcase, played to better effect in Mel Brooks's Young Frankenstein. This scene contains the film's funniest nonsense gag, where Curly retrieves some volumes from a shelf and is repeatedly bashed by a boxing-gloved hand, whose owner is never explained. The skeleton-outfitted spy appears at the door, prompting the lily-livered Larry's hat to inflate in fear, echoed by Moe's literal hair raising in terror. Goodness knows how these characters function even in their make-believe world, as they're even terrified of a face-painted balloon. The team's reliance on constant panicky nya to mask a lack of quality soon grates, rendering this a weak two-reeler, mostly devoid of decent laughs. By the time Curly accidentally lights the bomb wick and blows up the house and spies with it, it's not the only bomb on offer. The oddest running sight gag is a recurring pie in the face hitting the trio from an unknown assailant. Each time we cut back to the increasingly curious reporter dying to know the phantom pie flinger's identity, the professor teases out the answer, till finally admitting it is in fact he, before receiving a faceful himself. John Cleese talked of the internal logic of comedy plotting in his rigorous approach to structuring the peerless faulty towers. Here we are confused rather than amused by even a reliable laugh generator like a custard pie, because we don't understand where it comes from or why. Shame on Mr. Lord for passing off such a half-baked gag in a weak-kneed comedy. Idle Rumors, 1944 in July 1944, the Three Stooges decided to tackle the Wolfman, a variation of sorts on the established horror icon well into his franchise run by actor Lon Chaney Jr. Over at Universal, Chaney Jr. was midway through his five incarnations of the role. The House of Horror need have no fear of copyright issues, though, if they ever bothered to look at Columbia's unrecognizable attempt. Idle Rumors was the 80th of the Stooges' shorts at Columbia, continuing their collaboration with director Del Lord, who co-wrote the script once again with Elwood Ullman, 
This time they are a trio of indolent bellboys snoozing in the lobby while the duty clerk tries to wake them up. Once roused by a collapsing seat, they quickly become animated by the lovely Mrs. Leander, Stooge's regular Christine McIntyre, and begin frantically competing with each other for her affections whilst dodging her jealous knife-throwing husband Vernon Dent. The Leanders have captured Loop, the Wolfman, hoping to exploit him in their carnival. After a well-staged optical effect, bowing curly under the weight of their trunk topped with innumerable suitcases, the Stooges are ordered to clean the Leander's apartment. There they come face to yak-haired face with Loop, one of many monsters played by well-known stuntman Duke York. In universal lore the Wolfman is a tragic, cursed figure. Here he is inadvertently all that due to the deliberately laughable rather than pitiable face fuzz. The makeup artist has transformed him into a man who by the full moon seemingly changes into a hybrid of Fu Manchu and an anti-Semitic rendering of Shylock. Hilariously, York sprouts streams of coarse foliage from his eyebrows, cheeks and beard, but magically the hair on top of his head is left as normal. For good measure, his suited physique is padded out a la Frankenstein's monster and he sports a hunchback. He is a walking greatest hits package of all the celebrated monsters. But wait, no Dracula fangs? The Wolfman runs amok through the hotel, bursting in upon two ladies sharing a bedroom. When the Stooges arrive, the older battle axe of the two expresses more terror at witnessing Curly than their hirsute tormentor. I resemble that remark, he squeaks indignantly. He then plays out a version of the old mirror routine opposite Loop in front of the vanity table till the lycanthrope loses it at being spat on by Curly who makes to polish the absent glass. The trio attempts to calm him twice with the kind of music too awful to soothe this savage breast, and after he pursues them into the confines of an elevator, a slack ending simply cuts in the middle of their cage going up and down the shaft. Overall, Idle Rumors is hairy, hoary, and rather hacky. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you've just heard, don't forget to click so, and please hit subscribe. If you build it, they will come.